Hi, Dave Jack here, Superintendent of Fokker County Schools with a rather long video update um, relative to uh, the pandemic and plans moving forward uh, as of April 14th. So there's a lot of information to share, a lot to cover, and it'll be actually be in parts. Um, I'll be sharing information about meal service, um, surveying of parents, um, updates relative to the FAQ documents, um, challenges that we're facing, and then I have some other comments I want to make about a variety of different things, but, and I'll try to be brief. And then Major Warner is going to provide an update about instructional planning as of April 14th to include the plan for the first week, the first week beginning April 14th, um, how, how students and parents can access teachers, how instruction will be delivered, uh, technology needs and resources, and then a question that everyone's had recently is relative to grading, uh, the grading of assignments beginning April 14th. And I just want to reiterate that uh, there's a lot there's a lot to unpack there uh, as far as grading and, and options for students and parents, um, but n nothing that is being received at, at homes right now from teachers uh, is is graded and um, the plan moving forward in the fourth quarter is for a, a, a pass-fail approach, which Major will talk more specific. It's not that simple, but he'll be talking more about that in a minute. But and I wanted to mention also that if if teachers are reaching out to um, students um, to connect with students, perhaps hosting uh, Zoom conferences with students. Um, I don't personally have a problem with that as long as um, there's no new instruction being provided. If it's just an opportunity to connect with students, uh, it's first and foremost certainly optional. It's not mandatory. And, and I, I hope that doesn't upset teachers out there. But teachers, if you're, if you're telling them you're having mandatory meetings right now, uh, that's, that's a no-no. They're, they're, they're not mandatory. But I would encourage students, if your teachers are reaching out to you, to connect with you and see how you're doing and see what your needs might be, et cetera. I think that's a positive thing. Um, so enough said there. So a uh, lot to unpack here as far as what's happening right now and what's what has happened. It's hard to believe that it's just been since March 23rd. So this is April 3rd. It's just been, been you know, a little over 10 days that we've, we were told that we would be closing schools in, across the state. And you know, there, there's no, there's no playbook for this. There's no roadmap for this. Um, we have a good crisis management plan. There's no chapter on, on pandemics. And so it, it is like being pushed out of a window and kind of growing your wings on the way down. And I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit about the steps we're taking and why we chose to certain, to go certain directions with instructional delivery and devices and so forth. And, and I can tell you just I'm fairly well connected with superintendents in our region and to a lesser extent around the state. And there's 132 school divisions and everyone is doing something a little different. They're, 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 we're following the recommendations from the state superintendent and the state school board. Uh, but there's a lot of latitude given within those recommendations. So there's, there's flexibility that school divisions can, uh, can adopt. And, that's, and we're no different, but everyone's doing something a little different. And um, I'll talk more about that in a minute. But uh, first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to um, the meals folks, the folks in our nutrition program, Dave Graham, the folks at the Fresh um, Foundation for uh, helping with the backpack program through Fuck Your Fish and Heartwood Center. 750 bags have been distributed to students thus far that contain meals. And our Grab and, Gro Grab and Go program has distributed 12,000 meals um, since uh, I guess the beginning of last week. So um, hats off to you, to you folks for, for volunteering, for making this happen, for making sure kids have enough to eat. Um, I, I just think that's a, just a really great illustration of what we're all about in Faulkner County. The fact that we're, people are really stepping up to make sure kids have enough to eat. Um, so um, that, that's occurring in five different locations, two schools, and then three mobile locations. Uh, so that, and that will continue, although Mr. Graham indicated that 
uh, the food deliveries while they continue, they've they've they're um, there. There's a, a fear that in two weeks or so we may not have access to the food that we have access to now. So it may mean that we're providing fewer meals at a time because I think we're doing like five at a time or something. Uh, we're providing fewer meals at a time or maybe different kinds of meals. Uh, but uh, for, most importantly, we want to make sure the kids don't uh, have something to eat. And so I wanted to thank everyone that's been involved in that. And and it, it's such an important reminder of the priorities um, that we really need to adhere to. And all, all the all the other things, we're going to figure it out. Right? We're going to figure it out. It's not going to be perfect, but we're going to figure it out, and we're going to we're going to try to create seamless, easy processes, instructionally and with devices. And there's not going to be any gotchas. I think that's the thing that's really stood out. Uh, and I wouldn't say it's disappointing, but it's just a little bit. So we're not going to gotcha anyone. Um, we are going to work with people. We are going to make it work. And is it going to be perfect? No. But we're going to make it work, and we're going to provide what folks need instructionally in terms of devices and, and, and meals, etc. It's not going to be perfect, but we're going to get there. So let me segue into the survey. We, we sent out a survey. Almost 5,100 households responded to the survey about devices and internet connection and um, um, what, you know, what those needs are within households. And it's interesting that of the of the 5,100 households that responded, 841 said that they didn't have a computer, and 407 indicated that they they did not have internet access. And so, of course, Fauquier is a rural county. Does there there is no real pervasive broadband uh, system or provider within the school community, the, the county? It just doesn't exist. So. Um, if we're going to be providing any instruction online, we need to make sure everyone has what they need as far as devices. So we have a plan uh, for the device distribution that will be coming out on a major we'll be talking about, it, but it will be coming out officially on April 9th. Uh, and there is a little bit to unpack there, so it'll be, but it will be coming. And it will basically be a curbside opportunity to pick up either a hotspot device so you can access Internet or a device or both. And um, But as far as internet access there, there are there are varying uh, options for parents to um, take advantage of in order to access the internet um, and, and and that does not mean that all instruction and every resource we provide is going to be online in fact we also will have a plan in place so that for for folks who in spite of whatever we provide still don't have a device still don't have internet internet we will be able to provide hard copies which isn't ideal, but it's it's um, it, it is a stopgap for those those folks who just won't be able to have re access to those resources. So, um, but as far as internet access, we will have Kajit units available at a limited supply. We're ordering more, but right now we have limited limited supply of Kajit, which are these these little hot spot units that you can bring home. But if you don't have good cell service, they really don't work. So you need to be in a place where you have decent cell service. But in that case, the hotspot will work. If you do not, if you do not have good cell service, like like in my community, we have uh, the county stepped up big time on the uh, four free, um, four free hotspots uh, popping up in the county. I think there's actually a fifth. Rumors there's a fifth coming into the Northern Fauquier and Marshall. But these are sort of high powered hotspots where parents can drive, um, drive the kids or students can drive up as sometimes I do now at our schools and park and access the internet and that's really that's a real positive thing and then of course there's a there's another component which is that we're outfitting 10 buses and this may take a little bit of time uh, because they have to be installed in the buses but we are in, in, outfitting 10 buses with the uh, same sort of high-powered hotspots that can be parked in various parts of the community and parents can access them and so okay I said all that and um, I alluded to this um, in some tweets and um, some other information that we've sent out. And uh, I immediately received this question. Do you mean to tell me that I'm going to have to drive my child to one of these locations potentially so that they can access the Internet? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. 
Um, that is a possibility. Your other options are, as I mentioned, portable hotspot, which may work in your home, or the hard copies, which is not ideal by any means, but or and the telephone, being able to connect with your teacher or your school via the telephone. Um, but if it's if if it is a uh, you know of paramount importance to access internet, we do have options for you, and that but that may include having to drive to one of these locations because uh, we do not have broadband access uh, throughout the county, pervasive through the county. Uh, so that's that. Um, updates and FAQs. Um, hats off to our, our, our folks in the uh, PIO's office, which is one person, Tara Olkowski. We've done more than 20 updates since February 28th. Let me repeat that. We started providing FAQ documents and updates related to coronavirus on February 28th. That was the first update. Um, that's important because um, I feel very good about the fact that we've been providing information regularly and consistently since that time. That information has been sent to all FCPS families and staff uh, via email, and it's also been posted at www.fcps1.org forward slash COVID-19. As far as FAQs are, are concerned, Tara's been warehousing the FAQs, the questions been at, that have been asked most frequently. We're up to 47 uh, frequently asked questions. And so, uh, again, before you send a question to me via Twitter or email, make sure you're looking at that document because uh, the, 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 the goal there is to be accurate and thorough and provide answers as quickly as possible. And so that's a good resource as far as getting that information. Um, Okay, before I hand this over to Major uh, to talk about the instructional plan, instructional planning beginning April 14th, just, just want to remind you that uh, there will be a lot of information coming out um, on or around April 9th. And the, and the timing isn't great. I get it. I get it that next year, week's spring break, um, we're going to be sending out information on the 9th, sort of in the heart of spring break. Um, that information is going to be helpful to folks beginning on the 14th. But again, flexibility, patience, ease. The goals beginning the 14th, the first few days of, the, of that week of the 14th are to reconnect with students, work through bugs. Major will be talking about this again, but work through issues, work through problems, work or lay down, set expectations. You know, no one should panic if they are unable to connect with a teacher on the 14th or they haven't been able to read through all the materials that we've provided on the 9th. It's, it's okay. We'll, we will be fine. You will be fine. I, prom I promise you. Uh, we were going to make this as easy as possible, as seamless as possible, um, not only because it's what the state superintendent recommends, because it's, but because it's the right thing to do. Um, Challenges, um, so this is my, my summation here. Um, challenges that we're facing continue to face. I mentioned the meals piece. Uh, we're gonna try to, you know, obviously we're gonna try to work through that and continue to provide meals, uh, healthy meals uh, for students um, for as long as, as is necessary. But that may mean that we adjust how we're doing it and what is provided, but you'll just have to stay tuned for that. Um, uh, learning accessibility, the, I talked about that. Um, access to online is, is critically important. I know that has people worried, but again, well, we, we have other alternatives that include hard copies and, and use of the telephone, etc. Um, but I think there's, um, there's a good plan in place as far as providing, I think we're going to have enough devices, knock on wood, but even if a school, let's say we start delivering devices on the 16th, handing them out curbside, even if we run out, we'll, we, we'll figure it out. We anticipate that some schools will have greater needs than others. So if a school runs out, it may mean that we say, hey, sorry, can you come back tomorrow or the next day and we'll have the devices ready for you. Um, and then uh, as far as challenges, again, budget, as, as you probably know, this is not really instructionally related, but it's something I need to mention. Um, the, the county has flat funded schools um, 
for next year uh, and, and the county is clearly anticipating that there's going to be some some uh, significant uh, revenue downfalls downfall downfall in the economy I think that's what everyone's anticipating so it means that we're gonna have to adjust our budget request uh, by about 3.8 million dollars what we're what we're really hoping and praying for is that the state doesn't adjust their allocations to schools uh, but we won't know that until April 20th and um, you know, we will. We're going to make it work one way or the other. But it's p possible that the state cuts our budget, and that means if the state cuts our budget, then we've got to make cuts uh, to our proposed budget. And this, the stimulus that's coming from Washington certainly will help, but we don't know yet what that looks like, how it will flow to counties or school communities when it does flow. How what strings will be attached to it? We don't know any of that yet. Um, but I, I guess we'll know by April 20th. Um, and, and, and finally, I just want to say um, in my notes here, I've got a, a time for grace. Um, and I mentioned this as I began my comments. Uh, we are in, at, in such a difficult, uh, sort of unprecedented time, but we are, we are remaining positive and we are Re remaining upbeat about the provision of instruction and as I said everyone's doing something a little different with providing instruction to students and whatnot and how they're doing it when they're doing it we, we selected the strategy that I think fits best for our school community um, but it's it's also a time that we all recognize that nothing is perfect there's no plan that we're gonna put forward that is perfect no one can and no one is going to it's just it's not realistic but we're going to do the best we can to meet the needs of our students and provide them with the resources that they need and we're not going to point fingers uh, and we're not going to whine and complain about what the state or federal government is doing we're just going to make it work and we're going to stay positive and I'd ask you to do the same thing because there's absolutely no doubt about it that there's going to be bugs uh, beginning the week of the 14th there's going to be frustration, for example, just in things like how to use the equipment that we're providing, even though we're going to provide as much help as we possibly can. But there's still going to be frustration. It's not going to be a perfect system. Um, you know, the, the pass-fail, which you're going to be hearing more about shortly, is that it's not perfect either, but it's the fairest um, sort of uh, pervasive grading policy that we could come up with and it's also what the state recommends so um, it, it is a time for grace it is a time to sort of sit back and recognize that we are in an unprecedented time and and fact of the matter is you know uh, getting your stuff out of your gym locker or um, you know I don't know what else it's some some of those things just pale in comparison to the work we're, we're attempting in terms of just getting make sure kids have food to eat we are in a we are in a tough situation and while I appreciate the questions I get and, and I answer them as as quickly as I can and try to provide the great answer I, the good answers you know there there are so many other things that are just humongous and um, we got to make sure we get it right. And, and I'll, follow, I'll finish with this. I met with Major this morning, and we we're talking about that April 9th sort of deadline for providing all this all this information out to um, the parents, teachers, etc. And I asked this in, in the same question that you're probably thinking. I said, why why is it going to take till the ninth? Isn't there a way we can get this information out sooner? Because it's going to take a while to digest. And the way he answered is 100% correct. He said, Doc, we got to make sure what we give is right. We got to make sure what we're providing is accurate. We got to make sure what we're providing has been um, well thought through and considered and vetted. And we got to make sure it's right. We don't have to go back and then fix something we've put out because it was it was inaccurate or or because between now and the ninth something changed at the state level, which is very possible. So um, stay tuned for that. that. That'll be coming in Major's update. But hang in there. Uh, keep your questions coming. Uh, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm happy to help any way I can. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Major Warner, Deputy Superintendent, Fauquier County Schools. I'm um, happy to be with you. I just wanted to add a, the, the second segment um, to Dr. Jack's video. I um, wanted to provide our, our community and parents and stakeholders just a, a brief update on, on where we are with our instructional plan that will start on um, April the 14th. And so, consistent with what um, Dr. Jack said earlier, we um, uh, have amended the timeline just a little bit so that we give teachers and parents the opportunity uh, April 14th through 17th, just to um, treat that as the first week of school. Really putting the focus on um, introducing themselves to each other while they already have a relationship. Uh, we just want teachers to be able to reach out to kids during that week and kind of set the expectation for the variety of tools in which they will um, use to engage their kids, um, whether it be through Google, Zoom, um, telephone, um, email, um, hard copy packets of information. Um, the guidelines that we're going to be providing teachers early next week will outline the expectations in terms of what they should be communicating um, that week of April the 14th. So that week really is just designed to um, let everybody kind of get into the flow of what's going to be happening. So technically the, the hard start date will be April the 20th um, as an official date. But um, the first week really is just to kind of get into you know, what it is that um, teachers will be doing, whether, when they'll be available. Uh, to students, um, the hours, um, answer any questions, what form will they be able to use to uh, send questions to teachers, etc. So that really is something that we just want everybody to introduce themselves with. In terms of access to teachers, um, this will be in the guidelines that will go out to teachers um, and to parents um, next week, but um, we're asking that teachers establish um, uh, sort of a baseline for what the needs are for students and families. So we're asking them to reach out, um, figure out what your needs are. There may be some of you who may say whatever you're doing like, uh, um, through a virtual forum that we're gonna need that in hard copy because we have access issues. So um, during that week of April 14th, um, there will be a needs assessment in terms of um, how teachers will be able to set up the expectations for their, their students. Um, we do expect teachers to be available to students at least once a week um, at a minimum. It certainly can be more, but at least once a week to assist with students' um, questions. And again, that can be done via email, phone calls, um, some other online learning format that is mutually agreed upon between um, students and teachers. When we think about um, how um, new learning, new instruction will be delivered, um, kids and parents can expect uh, the format to be both digital and non-digital, i.e. Um, the utilization of devices and platforms like Google and Blackboard, which is our primary learning management platform. Uh, Zoom, uh, those are our um, sort of online formats that are, that are digital in nature. Uh, but we do um, have embedded in the guidelines um, formats and expectations for um, tasks that can be completed um, with or without a device. And hence, um, it can be used with a device or if you uh, don't have access to a device or won't be able to get one, um, then we um, have made provisions for teachers and schools to provide that information in hard packets. And a lot of our schools are, are preparing to have that information available to people um, the week of April 14th through the 17th. So more information will be coming about that. For those students who need hard copies, um, um, our teachers will be submitting um, those items to their schools. A lot of them have been in schools, have already been preparing those things and your principals will be sending out information that will let you know on what days, if you need hard copies of materials, that they'll be available. Um, and adhering to CDC guidelines, um, we, we will allow parents um, to either come in and pick that up if it needs to be emailed to you um, or mailed to you, we'll make provisions um, for that as well. Um, in terms of the delivery of technology devices, um, we have really developed this in um, sort of three phases. Um, phase one um, will occur for high school students on or about April 16th. Um, we've developed a process um, to start to roll out um, devices to those who have expressed a need through the survey for high school students first and foremost beginning on or about April 16th. Um, those guidelines will be coming out um, next week. And then phase two of, of the device distribution will occur for middle school students. Um, you can expect to be able to access those devices at your schools um, on or about April the 21st. And then phase three of the device distribution will start to occur for the elementary schools 
um, as those activities that as we get down through the grade levels will be less reliant on technology. Um, but for those that will need access to devices, we have um, made arrangements for that process to begin for elementary age kids on or about April the 23rd. So three phases for technology um, delivery. April 16th will be phase one. Um, for the high school folks, April 21st will be phase two for the middle school people. April 23rd will be the third phase um, for um, elementary distribution. And again, all of this will be coming out to um, parents and students um, in an um, electronic format so that you can see specifically what, what will be happening there. So that, that, those are some specifics in terms of the uh, delivery of technology. A lot of angst um, and questions have come in around grading guidelines, so I'll likely spend most of my time uh, on this particular piece, and I may loop back around into some of um, the other instructional pieces, but I really want to take a few minutes to kind of spend on, on the grading piece. So true to what um, VDOE and our state superintendent has asked and Dr. Jack has referenced earlier um, in his segment of the video, um, we have um, developed guidelines through a committee approach that involved um, teachers from each of the grade level, administrators from each of the grade level. So these guidelines have been developed by your teachers. They're grade level specific. Um, they are consistent with some of what our regional partners are doing um, in terms of the guidance that's come out from, from uh, the state superintendent and certainly um, things that are happening within Region 4. So, um, so in terms of elementary school uh, grades uh, pre-K through 2, um, um, and this is applicable for a lot of grades, but specifically for PK through two, work will not be graded and will be used as a review and enrichment for purposes only. So there will not be a final marking period grade issued for pre-K through two. Certainly true to what we do at year end for grades pre-K through two, you can expect to get some information from your schools, from your teachers relative to where your kids uh, may be in terms of reading levels, et cetera, going into the summer and going into the next year. Uh, for grades three through eight, um, and those courses that are non-credit bearing um, in grades six through eight, um, only work issued prior to March 13th will be graded. Um, all final grades, including the fourth marking period grade, will denote uh, a pass for non-credit bearing courses in grades three through eight. So for grades three through eight, um, that's there. Uh, for grades nine through 11, and all middle school students taking credit bearing courses, i.e. Spanish one, French one, algebra one, geometry, et cetera. Um, there are some specific guidelines that we will be providing um, here for you, and I'm gonna go through those here now. Um, so no work assigned um, after March 13th and up through um, April 14th um, will be graded. Uh, so work assigned for the fourth marking period uh, will be assigned as a pass incomplete grade um, for all of those classes. Um, again, that's for all 9th through 11th, all middle school students taking credit bearing courses. And the final grade on the transcript um, for those credit bearing courses will be a pass or an incomplete. The incomplete will be issued if, if teachers and students felt like they were not able to kind of get through that information and we'll, we'll provide summer opportunities for kids to make that up before we, we were, are able to um, put in a, a final pass. But the default grade for all credit bearing courses in grades nine through 11 and for middle school students taking a credit bearing course will be a pass. We've built into this process an additional provision because we recognize that on March 13th, there were a lot of kids that had done a lot of great work and, and had gotten a, a, a really strong final grade on March the 13th. So for those students, um, you'll be given the choice um, to accept the grade that you had on March 13th as the final letter grade or the pass incomplete. So bottom line is for those students in grades nine through 11 and those middle school kids taking credit bearing courses, you actually have two final grade options. The default will be a pass if you're in good standing, but if you wish to accept the grade on March 13th, if you feel like that grade is most beneficial to you, um, we will give you the option to elect that grade to put in as the final grade and that grade will be um, averaged into your GPA. So it's, it's really a bonus for you. If you ended uh, March 13th with an A in Algebra 1, for example, um, you may choose to take the A in Algebra 1 instead of the pass, that therefore you'll get the benefit of, of the A averaged in um, for your final grade. Um, parents will need to put a, a written request into the counseling offices by June 30th if you prefer to use the letter grade option instead of the pass option. 
So again, this is a lot of information that I'm giving to you. All of this information, again, I'll reiterate, uh, will be put um, into electronic format that will go out to parents. All of this information will be given to teachers um, on or before April 9th. So um, please um, don't, don't panic. I'm, I'm talking about a lot of detailed information that you'll be able to see in print here pretty soon. Um, so moving along for those seniors, um, seniors um, were issued letter grades as described um, earlier um, on March 13th. That would be their final grade if they were in good standing. Um, if we had a senior that was not in good standing and, and may not have been passing a course on March 13th that they needed for graduation, they will be allowed to continue working on, on that in the fourth quarter. But essentially for seniors who um, were in good standing academically, as of March 13th, um, those students um, are done. Those grades will be recorded. The actual letter grade will be recorded um, on the final transcript. Um, and um, it, as long as that grade is of benefit to you. Um, if a senior does not wish to have a letter grade on their transcript, we will give seniors the option to select um, the pass option. And if you choose the pass option, that grade will not be calculated into your GPA. So for example, if a, if a senior um, got a D in calculus on March 13th, we're giving you the option to take the pass, therefore that D will not be um, averaged into your GPA and therefore it will not um, adversely impact that. So that's just another bonus that we're, we're giving really some of our credit bearing courses um, the option to go pass fail um, or the grade, whichever of the two is most beneficial to you. So that, that's, a, that's a good thing there. So that concludes um, the, um, the grading guidelines piece um, of this particular section. I do want to kind of loop back around to um, one additional item um, that I wanted to share under the um, in instructional update um, because I really do want to highlight some of the tools um, just briefly that um, parents can expect that their teachers may utilize. Again, I want to reiterate the, the, the instructional method of delivery um, has to be flexible. Um, April 14th through 17th, uh, teachers will be reaching out to their, their students and, and kind of reintroducing themselves and establishing the guidelines. But um, the, the method of the delivery may involve tools such as the telephone, um, email, Blackboard, Blackboard Collaborate, um, Google, um, uh, Google Hangout, Zoom, other apps. But most importantly, if you cannot access any of those um, items, um, we will make hard copies of anything that we provide electronically to kids. We will make hard copies of those available uh, to parents. We will be putting out um, a very simple um, infographic uh, that will be sent out to parents on or before April 9th with a lot of this information. We've got a large guidance document that's going out to teachers and principals on or before April 9th with all of the information that Dr. Jack and I just shared with you um, that will um, guide uh, teachers and principals in setting up their interactions with you beginning April 14th. So uh, please um, just take this opportunity to relax. We're all, all um, in Region 4 and around the Commonwealth are trying to um, meet students' needs through this sort of emergency um, uh, virtual form, format forum um, to best meet the needs. Uh, we do plan on offering um, as long as we're able to meet um, we do plan on offering some summer sessions for students later in the summer as long as the restrictions have been lifted. That's the only other piece that I will add that we'll be able to uh, hopefully meet face to face with students and fill in some of the gaps uh, for kids and teachers um, if we were not able to do so in this um, fourth quarter. So again, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jack, for your leadership. Thank you to all of our instructional staff, teachers and principals for taking the last couple of weeks to put in a lot of time to develop these guidelines. Um, we can't do it justice in the little bit of time that we've spent here, but I hope that the, the little bit of information that I've given you will help to kind of shape what you can expect beginning April 14th. But again, this will be sent out to you in electronic format um, um, in greater detail so that you'll be able to see um, what's coming your way beginning April 14th with a hard start date of April the 20th. Thanks, and I wish for um, uh, safety um, for all of you. Please stay safe, and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you.